I'm out here again for another winter camping training camp. And the trail is rather short and kind of flat today. And that has made me think I can carry extra because it's so short. Thirty four point five pounds plus that stuff. I didn't weigh these. My idea is to just bring the liquid I need. So, when spring and summer return, I will instantaneously revert back to my ultralight backpacks, which I love. However, for winter, I became convinced that this old school style backpack has an external frame and the pack itself weighs six pounds. However, it manages additional weight and volume Better. However, <laughs> when you have this weight on you, you're not agile. You must set your foot down on solid ground and between one step to the other step, you need balance. A slow plodding moose of a style gently through the wild woods. Welcome. As you continue beyond this sign, you are entering a forest protection area. That's going to be a quarter mile to the Sawyer Pond camping area. Hank Magus Highway 4.6 that way. That's because you can come here from there as well, but there's a river crossing. Only tents that fit on the platforms are allowed at the site. Only use dead and downed wood for your campfire. It says that humans have gone all through there and flattened out the forest and took all the wood. I've never been here because it has a reputation for being crowded. Here is site one. Looks good to me. Through the trees, not very far, you can see the next platform. Looking this way, I can't really see the pond, but I can see the water through the trees, kind of. Here is site two. Site two looks great to me. The only thing I could possibly complain about would be uh, that you can see the other platforms, one and three. Here is site three. Looks very similar to one and two. And you can see some kind of structure over there. Here is site four. I can see Five one way and three the other way and again with that structure uh, what? yes indeed that is a toilet and it looks great but I try not to think about that until it's absolutely necessary but if you want number five you're the closest to the toilet and I suppose other people would have to cut behind the site to get there here is site number five back a ways is the toilet structure. And then 
not that far over. I could see the platform for number four fairly clearly. So this must be six. Look at that, it's a tiny platform. Only the smallest of tents would fit there. There's the fire ring, and actually this one's up a little bit and has more of a view of the lake. And I think this is the last one before the shelter. As you might expect, all of these sites are one after another along the trail, and the trail goes right along the water's edge. And we're not quite halfway around the water yet. It's beautiful. There is the shelter. I am walking towards it, and it's next to the pond. Well, this is amazing. Who wouldn't want to visit here, right? Let's just have a look at this. There you go. There is another toilet sign right next to the shelter, and it aims uphill, but I don't see it. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. They're firing right on the lake pond. Man, I'll be surprised if nobody comes tonight because it's so mild in temperature. And part of me wants this site, number shelter, <laughs> because of the view. This is the best view, it's right on the water. However, I have a new tent and I wanna test it out. And I don't wanna put it in a shelter, I wanna test it, let's go. This is great. This is exactly what I want. Tiptoeing into winter conditions to learn how to do it. If it was really cold and this was really frozen on, that'd be great. Now I just put my tent on it. However, it's like melting and uh, it's wet. I got a winter tent. It's a Slingfin brand tent. It's a four season tent. It is designed to stand up to wind and snow. It was very expensive. This is not a product review. Nobody needs to do this. This is something I'm doing because I'm loving this, learning about winter camping. And I decided to go for it and get that tent. You can see it's gone right to that moisture that was on the wet ground. To protect from the moisture today, I'm putting the foam, closed cell foam pad here. It's Thermarest, Sole Light, something like that, I don't know. And on top of that, this time I brought my old air mattress, which is the Thermarest, oh my goodness, I can't remember, but it's the winterized. It's the one that's supposed to be uh, warmer, but this one's several years old. They have an even warmer one now. And then I'm going to sleep inside of this sleeping bag. Here's the pillow. This sleeping bag is wintry. It has a big hood. Um, this is just a pouch like to put food in, uh, but I use it for my batteries, all my camera batteries, and there's a hand warmer in there. And that has been working great. I don't even have to put it in the sleeping bag anymore. And then this is the first time I brought my summer sleeping bag. Uh, this is some kind of thermo rest too, but I think this is probably going to be too warm, but I just wanted to try that. It is about three o'clock. I think this would be a good time to walk around and find some firewood. There's no bear box. I think there should be a bear box. Hmm. But there's not. There's a bear wire. Let's go over there and hang up the food. There's a line running up there. How do I use this tool? Is this in case it gets stuck or is this to put it up there? Is you're supposed to take your string and tie your bag to one side and then at the other end you tie a counterweight to like a So how long will it take me to tie this? <laughs> I appreciate that they have this wire here. Otherwise, I would have spent who knows how much time wandering in circles looking for the right tree to tie this in. There, that's pretty. 
My husband was telling me all about this way of having a double rope in case the animal chews through one side of the rope, it still won't fall down. And I couldn't really understand what he was talking about. So I'd have to see it in action to get that concept. It's not super heavy, but... Mm -hmm. some good twigs. After I passed by the shelter, I started finding a lot of firewood. I can't even carry it all because so I'm carrying my camera. Okay, I'm back at the bear hang. I got a new stove. This is the MSR Wind Pro. And my summer stove works great. It's like a smaller version of this. Uh, but this is a winter version because this tube is going to allow me to, in its uh, cold conditions, invert this. And that lets it work better. Uh, right now it's about 34 degrees. So I think it will work upright. I won't have to invert it. And in the directions, it says, always begin in the upright position before you invert. The actual stove unit is a little bit large. This, this is a little bit larger than my summer stove, and these allow for a bigger pot because in theory, you'd be melting snow to get your water. <laughs> no, I turned it off. What? How stupid. What was I doing just then? I'm going to light the match, then turn on the stove. Right, here we go. Water on. Beautiful. An owl is hooting. Who cooks for you? It is only 5.30 at night. I am not tired and uh, it's dark. It's really dark, but the sky is clear. So how can I not try again with the astrophotography? The stars are 
wonderful. Just you just gotta stand here and just turn off all your lights and just look up there. Just Here is the view inside my tent. I have these screen windows open here, and there's a vent. Owl. And there's a vent here. And we'll see how we do. And the owl is saying very funny things, kind of what I would expect a dog to say, but he's a bit far. I'm not sure if it's picking up on my video recording. He says, ooh, 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 ooh. I don't want to be, you know, scared for nothing. So usually what I do is listen to a audible book on tape um, with the volume just going out as if people are talking in here. That's probably enough to, to animals go the other direction. A new day. It was a very clear, mostly quiet night. It would be utterly silent for a while, and then a rolling bit of wind would come. It was really interesting. I felt like I could hear the wind on Mount Kerrigan across the street, which of course is not true. And then I could hear it coming down and coming across and then my tent would wiggle a little and it would blow and then I could hear it cross the pond and then it would be utterly still again. Maybe that's their nest right there, I think it is. Very dramatic, there's at least four. I can do it, one. Thirty. Guess I'm ready. I forgot to ever take this trail around, but now I see on the map that it just goes around all the other sites to the shelter in number six. So if you knew you were planning to stay on that side, you could bypass everybody else's campsite because all the campsites are one after the other along that pond front. This was a delightful campground. Five star. Because of the view.
back to the car. That was nice. What a nice place to visit. I have nothing but good things to say about that 1.5 mile trail to get there. <laughs>